Working on a 2002 Ford F-150 with a 4.6 liter. I'm gonna plug into the OBD2, which is right down there, right by, uh, or I should say right above the uh, accelerator pedal, right there. So let's go ahead, let's plug in. And then I will need to uh, put the ignition to the on position for it to read correctly. Let's see. Got my handy dandy launch code reader. Love this little thing. Very affordable. I'll put some links in the description below where you can pick them up on Amazon. Cylinder 3 misfire. That's one code, so you want one of two. Engine misfire detected on startup. First 1,000 revolutions. I also said, owner also said that the, uh, that it was flashing when he was driving, so, I don't know, let's see if we can get it to do it. I can see the, well, let's start the engine. So the service engine soon, check engine light is on. I don't want to get the engine too hot because it's been cold, it's been sitting overnight. But he did say that it was flashing and that's not a good sign that means raw fuel is going into your catalytic converter and the one thing that'll wipe out a catalytic converter faster than anything is raw gasoline going into it so i'm gonna shut this off so i don't want to get too warm but we know that it is cylinder number three so let's go take a look i need to move the vehicle so you can see it better one two three and then way back there is number four so on this side the cylinder order goes uh one, two, three, four, starting at the other side, five, six, seven, eight. So just depending on which cylinder, so, so not all firing orders are the same, right, on vehicles. So on some GMs, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, in that case, if it was one, two, three, your number three would be over there, right? So this happens just to set up, set up, set up pretty easily. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So number three cylinder is what you want to go to, not the third number for the firing order, which I think is seven. It wouldn't be, you wouldn't go to number seven. You just go to the specific cylinder you're working on, depending on where that cylinder is located physically on the engine. Just because it's number three doesn't always mean that it's cylinder number three, okay? So one, two, three is right there, right? So you have a clip, electric clip right here, and then you have a seven millimeter seven millimeter um bolt that holds it on so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to unclip the electrical connector and then uh, unbolt it from uh the seven millimeter unbolt that misfire can be a couple things it can be a bad coil it can be a bad spark plug it can be low compression on the cylinder um if you guys uh these engines are known for eating up coil packs for whatever reason and if you want to double check that you could mark number three Put a three or an X, just so you know, just so you remember what what coil coil that is, what coil pack it is, and then you take out another coil, say from like one, which is right here, and you swap them, right? You put one to three, three to one. If the misfire travels to cylinder number one, then you know it's the coil pack. If it doesn't, if it stays with number three, then you know something's going on with cylinder number three. Um, that's going to need a little bit more close attention, and it could be. A bad fuel injector, a bad spark plug. Um, if you had ignition spark plug wires on this, it could be a bad spark plug wire, just depending on what it is. But that's a quick and easy way to uh, to check to see if the coil packs are good. The ignition coil packs are good. Is just flipping, just flipping uh, coil packs with a known good one. Pull it into the garage here. Got uh, get some more light on the situation. Okay, number three is right there, right? So third one back on the passenger side. So I'm gonna try to get this clip off, which is right back here. So that's actually number one. So let me show you this real quick. So right here on the bottom, right there, that little clip sticking out, you gotta push that in at the same time you pull out and uh, it frees it nice and clear. So let me see if I can do it here. Okay, I just stuck it down there, stuck my finger underneath it, and then got it loose. Did I forget my seven millimeter? I did. Now I'm gonna go for the bolt, which sits right there. You do not have to remove the fuel rail, which runs right above it. This whole thing is a fuel rail. You don't need to remove that. Once I get the bolt out, 
I should be able to wiggle the coil pack out of the way. Okay, got my seven millimeter here. Just going down. Try to get on the bolt here. Kind of doing it blind because I can't see where the bolt actually sits. It's right there. See it? That's the bolt you want to get out. So. Okay. Right tail lefty Lucy. Do not drop this bolt down in the intake on top of the intake. And if you need to, get a magnet. Okay, got it out with the help of the magnet. Got the uh, bolt out. Going back there with my hand with number three. I'm gonna try to work it out. Oh yeah, it just slides right out. <laughs> there you go. It is out. Coil number three is out. Okay, so if uh, right there is the boot, you know, the boot right here that goes onto the spark plug, goes down on the spark plug. It's a good idea, and what I'm going to do when I get the new one, I actually have the new one already from uh, Motocraft. I'm going to put um, dielectric grease in there so it just coats the uh, spark plug. So next time someone goes to do this, it, uh, it goes in nice and easy, or comes out nice and easy, I should say. Sometimes the boots get stuck to the spark plugs and creates a real hassle when you're trying to change out the coils or the spark plugs. If this was soaked in oil, uh, main culprit for that is uh, leaking valve cover gaskets. You can um, you can actually buy just the boot itself. You don't have to buy the whole coil, which is pretty cool. If these come become soaked in oil, if they do become soaked in oil, most of the time these boots will expand. They just soak up the oil like a sponge. So uh, let me show you the new coil. Okay, got the new Motocraft coil here. Part number is 3W7Z-12029-AA. So let's open this up and then compare the old one to the new one, make sure they match up. Okay, on the right is the old one, on the left is the new one. They look exactly the same. All the connectors are the same. Everything lines up real nice, nice like. Uh, one thing I wish they came with was dielectric grease in them already, but it doesn't, you can see. Right there, it doesn't have any dielectric, so I'm gonna put some more in there and then uh, reinstall this thing. Okay, got it loaded up with some dielectric. Gonna lead it back down in there. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna put you down, but the, the, the thing is you just get back in the hole, I'm gonna Put you down because I can't do this with one hand. I need both my hands to be able to work it down in there. It's going at an angle. So I just want to make sure that everything's going, lining up correctly. And I uh, can't do it with one hand. So I'm going to have to put you down, but I'll come back in once I have everything uh, everything put, to, put back together. Put the electrical connector back together, and I'll bring you back in when uh, when I'm test driving this thing. Make sure everything works well and the, that the uh, check engine light is not flashing anymore. All right, so I'm test driving the Ford. Check engine light is off. It was in the bottom left hand corner. No more flashing while driving. So uh, always confirm that you fixed the problem. And uh, I have fixed the problem. You know, nine, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be the coil pack that goes bad on these 4.6s. Like I said, you can, uh, you can swap coil packs and see if the, if the misfire moves with the coil pack, then you know that the coil pack is bad. Um, if it stays the same, then you're looking at something else. Possibly a bad fuel injector, bad spark plug. If it has uh, spark plug wires, bad spark plug wires. Um, but uh, we were able to fix this on the first first try, so that's pretty awesome. I don't think a lot of people know about Bunny's Garage, so if you guys can share it on YouTube and, uh, and let people know about uh, the DIY videos I'm making to help you guys save money, it would be greatly appreciated. So uh, if you can, subscribe, and like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.